What up, you? You are no boy. Last self glue tap with what do big loop in CR2 baby so yeah man you know I came a little video uh, you know, talking a little bit about uh Q B N K and so uh, talk about Daisy and Champ and all what they talk about on the panel a uh, little something you know what I mean and uh I'll back to that trick we'll put up a video one day um, this one is, uh, you know, I kind of mentioned it in the other video about Cosa Nostra, and that was about it. But as you can tell from the thumbnail, we got John J. Gotti, who is a.k.a. Gotti Sr. or John Sr. or John Gotti Sr. We got Sammy Bull Gravano, a.k.a. Sammy the Bull, Salvatore Gravano, uh, and we got Frankie the Chico, uh, and, uh, you know, going hypothetically, right? And that's if everything that, you know, Sammy the Bull has said uh, regarding to this situation is true because we know how, you know, he likes to lie and, and, and make him out, make himself out to be the hero all the time and everybody else is bad people and he's such a good person and, you know, he's never had, he's never done anybody dirty and when it comes to business and we know that's a crock of shit. We know that he's killed, had guys killed and had a part of killing people for that reason to take over their business um you know uh no excuses rj and uh you know he's as everybody knows well if you don't know i'm gonna tell you now rj teamed up with mikey d leonardo aka mikey scars or mikey scar who is an ex gambino captain and flipped right and testified and put away more guys than I believe anybody in the history of Costa Nostra. Um, but the difference between him and Sammy the Bull was Sammy the Bull, did, you know, Mikey didn't admit to 19 murders and only got five years. You know what I'm saying? That was a damn shame. The, the government should have been ashamed of themselves for doing, making some type of deal like that, especially a fucking uh, uh, no good motherfucker like Sammy the Bull who just turned right around after they allowed him to keep millions of his dollars, right? They allowed him to keep millions of his dollars, put him in the witness protection, relocated his family. Uh, he had businesses, restaurants. He had a pool, some type of... I, he still was in the construction business. I think they were making pools, um, you know, and decided to get into dope business, got busted, got 20 years, 17, 18 years, something like that. I think I want to say it was, it was between Arizona state case and then a federal case because... I believe they attached him. They they were able to indict him under shipping the uh, the ecstasy, ecstasy pills from New York to Arizona. So therefore, making it a federal case when it got to do with the mail and all that type of things. Um, and I believe he did seventeen and some change out of like nineteen years, twenty years, and nine. But admitting to having his hands in nineteen murders, he did five years. I did four years on a freaking probation violation. That's a damn shame, man. You know, that, I mean, it's ha it has to be the best, sweetest deal in the United States, you know, history when it comes to the penal system, you know, because that's how bad they wanted John J. Gotti. That's how bad they wanted him. They wanted him that bad. They were willing to make a deal with the devil. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 it, 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 it was a big slap in their face when he got caught up again. You know what I'm saying? But you know what? They had that coming because they. You should have never made no type of deal like that, you know. I mean, five years, that's all he got. I mean, that wasn't necessarily the government that did it as far as the the the, the U.S. attorneys and all that. That was the judge because when it comes to federal cases, you can have all your letters of recommendations from the, you know, the prosecutor that, oh, he helped us with this, this, that, and that. Um, you can have a letter from probation department. You can have letters from the, I imagine, the, the agents that arrested you, your handler and all that type of shit. Uh character letters from you know pastors and and whoever else right politicians and whoever else but at the end of the day unlike state when it comes to the state where the the prosecutor you know gives the deal out and then you accept it and then the judge will be like okay i sign off on it or sometimes the judges will step in and say nah nah i don't think that deal i think that's too good of a deal he you know he don't deserve that or whatever but when it comes to federal prison the, you know the judge will go over everything, all the reports, 
And then at the end of the day, it's up to him on what he's going to give, you know. And that judge decided to give only five years out to old Salvatore Gravano, who, to be real, everybody, he really didn't even do time in prison. He was, you know, he did the first year at uh, M MDC Brooklyn. I believe it was Brooklyn, you know, when they were fighting the case. He was there from December of 90 until November of 91. Then they got him in the middle of the night, took him to Virginia, Quantico, which is FBI headquarters, and he did most of his time there in the barracks with, you know, agents supervising him. You know what I'm saying? Where he was allowed to go out and run. He, uh, he's even told stories that they took him in this, into the town, into the city, to get haircuts, to have dinner with his wives, with his wife, excuse me, his wife. With his wife. I don't know what reason they do that. You know what I mean? Because he was a special, a special witness, right? That's why they wanted John God. You know, that just goes like with that dude, Boxer Enriquez, California, who was the uh, part of an organization, um, you know, he he finally was let out after being down. I think he did twenty. I want to say he did twenty. Let me see. I think he was down since 90, 90, 90, 90 92, something like that. He just got out recently, within the last year, but he kept getting denied parole uh, after the parole board was finding him suitable over and over again. I think they found him suitable four or five times, but between uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Governor Brown, and Newsom, they denied him like five or six times, maybe more than that. Um, and they said that basically he fit the criteria to be let out from changing his life, but the fact is he had a, such a big target on his back from that organization for him debriefing against them and testifying against them and helping law enforcement the way he has that, uh, you know, they would be Basically, if they allowed him to go out, the governor, he would be putting neighborhoods and neighbor, uh, people in jeopardy because, you know, it could be like, a, 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 what do they call that? A, a, like basically a casualty, like, a, how do you call that? A, a friendly fire type things, you know, being at the wrong place at the wrong time, something go wrong and some innocent person get killed. Um, but now he finally was let out, Newsom let him out. So what this guy was doing was, they, you know, he was in state prison doing life. Um, they would go pick him up if it was the feds, if it was the county sheriff, whatever police department. They would go pick him up, house him in a, you know, in a, in a, in a closer, in a county facility that was closer to um, where, you know, where he was going to be speaking at this convention. Um, and then he would get all kinds of extra perks and, you know, all kinds of different things, food, ice creams. All kinds of shit. They'd give him his own recorder to record himself so he can like like a journal type thing. Um, and then he would be taken out to wherever he was going to be speaking at, whatever hotel, whatever uh, event center, whatever it was. You know, and obviously they'd dress him up nice. He'd have slacks on with a nice button up shirt with the, with a with a tie. Sometimes it would be a, a suit. He'd have an overcoat on and he would speak and he would basically be breaking down. He was the expert, right? You know, and he would speak to the law enforcement about the group that he used to be involved with and what what things to look for, because this is how they do this and this is how they do that. And to be honest, uh, most of these groups haven't really changed nothing. You know, you're talking 50 plus years of. Uh, well, actually, I, I wouldn't say 50. I would say probably they made some changes sometime in the late 70s, early 80s. And pretty much since then, it's been the same. They haven't really changed nothing. That goes for almost all the organizations. Um and so, yeah, this dude would be taking, you know, like I said, he would be given uh, extra different type of foods and different things that would, you know, that was beneficial to him. And that's how Sammy the Bull was treated, you know. So when he says, you know, I got 22 years in prison, no, nah, your first five years were, you know, you're were, you're were laid up somewhere, actually like in a bungalow in a type of, you know, a little type of apartment, you know, uh, where FBI agents used to live, why they were doing certain trainings and things like that. You know, like I said, where the fuck are you in prison where they take you to go have dinner with your wife and into town to get haircuts? Come on, that don't happen. But that shows you how bad they wanted John Gotti. So they were willing to make this deal with this this dude, right? And so now, here he is now in his 70s, you know, late 70s. John Gotti done been gone now for 20 plus years. His One of his other brothers recently passed in the last couple of years. Uh, one of his co-defendants, Frankie Lope, passed away in the last two years 
you know, so now he's talking about, oh, I did all I could to get him out. I was really trying to get him out. Shit. Right. Um, John Bino, he done, he done passed. Uh, the chin, he done passed. Uh, uh, Jimmy Brown Fiala, he's passed. Uh, I don't know if he told on Patsy Conte, but he's passed. Uh, who else? Uh, uh, John Riggy, New Jersey, he's passed. Uh, you know, all these cats that from that era have passed. You know, uh, Sammy was a lot younger than a lot of these dudes back then, but now he's an old man, right? So, you know, now he's, you know, he's changing the narrative. So you hear you got RJ Roger and Mikey Scars, you know, talking about things. And they're just taking stuff from what's came out of his mouth on his YouTube channel and what he wrote in the book. Okay, yeah, Peter Moss was the author, but Sammy's never said nothing. Like, oh, that's not what I said. So now you're having contradiction of statements that were in the book and now that what he's saying here on his YouTube channel, you know, and like when most of these dudes, uh, you know, they, they try to make point the picture as they're the hero and everybody else with dirt bags. You know what I mean? That's just, the, this is how it goes with these cats. And, uh, they're all, they all do it. Um, the only ones I haven't really heard do it is Mikey scars so far and why he named the channel. No excuses. Now I, I still don't, you know, I got a cool little relationship with his son, and I'm not saying, uh, you know, he's been on the channel. Mikey Jr. has been on the channel. We're looking forward to bringing him on again and talk some more boxing. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, I don't agree with anybody um, testifying against their friends and stuff like that, right? Um, that's why he named the channel No Excuses because he says at the end of the day, you know, there's no excuses. He did what he did, and, then you know, he breaks it down on how, you know, he didn't take an entity to Peter. He took an entity to the whole – you know, uh, ent the whole uh, entity of Costa Nostra, you know, a blood oath. And when it comes to that, it's a little different, you know, um, than like a street gang or something like that. But nonetheless, um, other than him, you know, he keeps it real and raw. He breaks it down. He calls him, you know, he said he did a, it was a weak move on his part. You know, I give him some credit for saying that, but then at the end of the day, it still is what it is. Um, the only other one that's out there that kind of like has that type of mentality or that type of, he uses that same type of verbiage as Dominic Sakali. Um, you know, he keeps it, he still keeps it real to a certain degree, but again, with him, you know, he makes every excuse in the book on why he did what he did, you know, but he also says that, you know, you know, I didn't, uh, you know, I still did what I did and it wasn't, it ain't good at the end of the day, but. You know, at the end of the day, he was expecting way too much, you know, for what he was doing. You know, he says he gave uh, Joe Messino a few hundred thousand dollars during Christmas time, I think it was, or sometime while he was in there, while he was fighting his criminal, his case. He gave him over 300 grand, you know, and he's he said that once he got locked up that, you know, uh, the acting boss broke up his crew and, you know, he had no uh, income coming in and. You know, but thing is, you should have known. You already knew that you and that individual bumped heads. You should have already known the type of treachery, disloyal, and backstabbing that goes on in that life, uh, when, especially when it comes to money. And we're not talking chump change. We're talking, you know, thousands. We're talking racks. We're talking G's, you know what I mean, that uh, that were coming in, you know, to these guys. So, um you know, that's why I say, man, that's why I made that video loyalty and commitment, because when you get involved with something, right, especially when you uh, uh, organization, you take a blood oath to you most of the time, seven, eight times out of 10, you don't just get right in. You know, you're an associate for a while. You're a hang arounder for a while. You're doing, you know, you're involved in certain things to a certain degree. Um, but nonetheless, you see the treachery at the different levels. And anybody that says that, you know, anybody that wants to act naive and gullible, uh, like they didn't know this, they didn't know that, they're full of shit. Because, like I said, associates do dirty shit, they get done dirty. Low-level soldiers do dirty shit, they get done dirty. Captains do dirty shit, they get done dirty. Consigliere, underboss, up to the boss, are involved with janky shit, and they do janky shit too. And Joe Messino is uh, uh, the best candidate to show what being the top guy of that Borgata is willing to do to not get the death penalty and to look out for his family. I think I don't think he was really tripping on the because he, he took it all the way to trial, got found guilty. And then, you know, he decided to flip because, there you know, he was looking at the death penalty. But also, I believe that they were going to forfeit 
have him forfeit all money, all properties and everything. And he knew that he was going to go to prison. and He was going to leave his wife and, you know, kids out there. Um, so I'm thinking that he, you know, he decided to do this to keep some money and keep some property for his family. But from my understanding, he's alone now. So him and his wife ain't even together from my understanding, from what I'm hearing from other channels. Um, you know, I don't know how far, how much really they know. I don't know who they're in contact with. Um, and so who knows if that information is actually legit or not. Um, but for somebody like Joe Messino to make, if he was to make a channel and all that, he would make a ton of money. I mean, you're talking about a boss. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Mikey, Mikey Francis, Francis is a well-educated, well, um, and what I mean by educated, because I don't know if he's college, if he went to college or any of that. I know at one point he was in college and he dropped out. But as far as uh, intelligence, street-wise, as far as business-wise, he's got it. Sammy is uh, as well. So you're talking about Sammy under an underboss, Mike, Michael, an ex-captain. So you're talking about an actual boss with with, with Messino, who was part of the part of the administration for years when it came to that family. Uh, even when Rusty was around, he was his right hand man. You know what I'm saying? So this dude been around for a while. He'd been in the mix, good friends with certain other bosses. You know, so he would make a ton of money, I believe. I believe if Joe Messino was to make a channel, uh, I believe that he wouldn't he wouldn't take as long as Sammy has to get up to five hundred thousand. Well then again, you know what? Maybe Sammy has the more notor notoriety his name is more no you know, more uh uh infamous and stuff maybe not maybe i'm wrong about that i don't know but i i tend to believe that if joe messino was to come into the scene um i believe that he would he would he would hit a half a mil fast that's what i believe but then again i could be wrong you know like i said sammy the bull's name is more has more notoriety behind it maybe because if you don't if you're not all the way up in that scene and know about things then maybe you don't know who joe messino is and you know who sammy the bull is because him being linked to Gotti. i don't know but nonetheless, so this this video is about, you know, like I said, he's in my opinion, he's changing. He's trying to change history. He's trying to make himself look, uh, you know, admirable, like he's just stand up guy, you know, and it's been proven that he did. Many of his friends dirty in 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 the name of money, right, money and power to go up that ladder, to make himself look better, more, uh, uh, more loyal in, in Gotti's eyes. That's what I believe. You know, uh, he says that, you know, he, he says that he's at the, at the, at the, at the castle, of a friend of his, and he's telling the friend, look what you made me do to you, motherfucker. Look what you did to that. Louis Melito, he was saying, you know, he says, uh, he's telling Chico at his casket, oh man, I'm going to get who did this to you, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he tells a story that him and Frankie the Chico were talking and, and he told Frankie the Chico, I mean, excuse me, Frankie the Chico told him, I could never be, uh, I can, he could never be my underboss, but I could be his underboss. Um, and um, he says, well, if he starts acting up, we'll just kill him. Now, is that really true? Do you guys really believe that's what Frankie the Chico said? Maybe. But then again, I'm thinking, why would he, if that was the case and he already had this, you know, he already felt a certain way about Gotti and how Gotti's, uh, his mannerism and how he got down his swag. Why would he even back him to put him in that position? You know what I'm saying? Maybe he would back him to make it look like it and then backstab him. You know what I'm saying? That's what I think it would have went. Um, I think Sammy, on some of his stories, he's about maybe 70% truthful. Um, and I, and I believe he's more, hundred more truthful on some stories and more full of shit on other stories. You know, just depends how it makes him look. You know what I'm saying? Um, the way he handles shit, uh, he's just, uh, he's, I don't know, he's a trip. You know, the way he tried to make Frank, Mikey Francis in that little sit down with uh, with Patrick Bet David, he tried to make him look less than him and he's the man and Mike Michael just got pulled because of his dad and this and that, right? Uh, you know, he wanted him to admit that he killed somebody, uh you know, he was like, oh, well, part of administration, you know, your la your name goes around on a piece of paper and, you know, the other families, you know, are given the opportunity to put a beef in if they feel you shouldn't be put on, which, okay, that's true, but ain't nobody going to put on that piece of paper. Oh, yeah, he's done plenty of work for the family. You know, he, he, uh, he this, he that. No, 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 ain't none of that family's business what that man's done for that family. Come on, man. So he tried to say that. That's bullshit. 
You know what I'm saying? Why would somebody fucking implement themselves? Or not? I mean, it's only to a certain degree, but still, even that, it ain't none of their business what they had this man do for their family and why they feel that he should be put on. You know what I mean? Obviously, if his name's on the paper and it's being passed to the other four families of the city, they obviously feel that they that the, the guy deserves to be made. You know, and it's that simple. So I don't believe for one minute. You know what I mean? I don't believe that John Gotti was sitting in the car with him close by Steak, uh, Spark Steakhouse. I don't believe that. Um, I don't believe. I believe that he killed these guys to get their businesses. Um, I believe he's a greedy fuck, right? I believe that he he was playing John Gotti for a while there until John Gotti finally smartened up, which was more towards the end. Uh, but he's finally smartened up on what this little fucking devil was doing. Um, when it comes to Frankie DiCicco, if he was still alive, what would have happened to Gotti? Um, I believe, well, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess that could go both ways. If the, if it's really true what he said about what Frankie told him, then, and how stone cold of a gangster Frankie was and a powerhouse he was, then I could see him, you know, keeping maybe John more, more to the script, the old school script. Um, you know what I mean? Um, and I could see him, you know, keeping things more, you know, more of a lid on things, you know what I'm saying? Um, but at the same time, uh, at the same time, I don't really see, I don't see that, um, you know, I just think it would have went in a whole nother direction and, you know, you, it would have went in a whole nother direction. You know, I, you know, John Gotti gets the blame for bringing down Cosa Nostra and this and that. I mean, how, how could the man brought single handedly bring it down when you had motherfucking the Columbos and all their bullshit with their third internal war, right? They left 12, 14 bodies out there. You had Lucchese's killing a bunch of motherfuckers because they thought this and thought that and had a dream of this, or had a dream of that. Then you had Nikki Scarfo and them, what they had going on in Philly, right? Uh, so this is all going on around the same time, you know what I mean? Then you got the Chin, who supposedly don't like Gotti, but you got, the, you know, talking about, you know, people were saying that he's too, you know, out there too much and this and that. But then you got old, uh, you got old uh, uh, Gigante, you know, wandering around, acting like he's Dodo Bird, you know, mumbling to himself, talking to fire hydrants, talking to phone booths. Uh, unshaven in the bathrobe, hair all fucked up. You know what I mean? I, I don't understand how that was. I'm okay. Yeah, I mean the 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 idea to throw them off for all those years it worked, but at the same time he he slipped a few times. You know, having a nice, uh, I think they even said a, a a shark skin suit or something like that under his bathrobe that one of the agents seen. Um, I think he got a lot of attention on himself, and then the fact that when John told him. Uh, that, you know, that he made his son. He said, oh, I feel sorry for him. But this guy ended up getting his sons in hot water where he had to come out and tell the truth or they were going to jail. You know what I'm saying? So he had his kids involved. And then, you know, the sons were coming to see him to get messages to take back and forth. You know, so he put his his family in jeopardy, too. You know, so th there ain't no saying that, oh, he did a better job because at the end of the day, he died in jail, too. You know, he died in jail, too. Uh you know, all those days of, you know, like Carlo Gambino and, you know, Tommy Lucchese and those guys dying in their own bed, you know, uh, the Rico killed all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I can't think of any boss has been that got to die on the street. Uh, uh, no, nope. I mean, Joe Bonanno, but he was like retired, you know, by the, you know, they pushed him out. You know, he was an old, old man. I don't think he would have ran that family. Even if he was still involved, he wouldn't have ran that family all those years. Um, something would have happened, you know what I mean? So if the Rico would have been around back then, Gambino, um, all them dudes would have been locked up. You know what I'm saying? All them dudes would have ended up getting locked up. Um, and like I just mentioned about, they said Gotti single-handedly brought it down. No, it wasn't that. It was the fucking Rico. You know, uh, all those bosses got caught on tap, on wiretaps. Uh, you know, there was numerous guys on wire. There was guys on wiretaps dating back to the 60s, but at that time they couldn't use those. Uh, 
Sam the Plumber, Joe Bonanno. There were a lot of guys that got caught on tape um, back then. They didn't. They called it something else. I can't think of what they called it right now. But it wasn't mis. Uh, they couldn't use it in court because it wasn't legal at the time. Uh, so yeah, I don't think I. I you know, I would, I would definitely say that you know, if Chico, Frankie the Chico, would have been around still, it would have been a different, uh, different uh, outcome scenario there with the Gambinos. Um, if he didn't get killed like that, um, definitely, I think you know, he was a uh, obviously him being at the underboss position. It, it, you know, uh, Joe Piney never would have went been there. Sammy wouldn't have been there. Uh, you know. Uh, different people over the years you know i don't know what would happen if he would have got arrested too i'm just saying that those beginning years of the Gotti reign in 1980 the end of 85 beginning of 86 i think the chico got killed sometime in what was it april or may i think of 86 uh you know he was that liaison of the family between the brooklyn guys and and queens manhattan guys you know what i'm saying and then sammy stepped up uh after that um but uh you know, from what they say, you know, Frankie the Chico was a powerhouse. He was a real gangster. Um, I'm not sure if him and John knew each other from Brooklyn when they were kids. Because I know Frankie's a little bit older. But I know they met each other in prison. Uh, I mean, not met each other in prison, but I know they were in prison together. Because um, you hear Joe Joe the Chico say that he's known Gotti since he was a kid. So I'm not really sure how long, you know, because I know Gotti was born in the Bronx and then they lived in East, East New York and Brooklyn for a while. And then they moved to Queens. Uh, so, you know, I don't know how far back to the Chico family and uh, the Gotti's go If it goes back all the way to Brooklyn like that, because I think the Chico's from Bensonhurst, I believe. Um, I'll ask uh, Mikey Jr. When next time I talk to him, see what, you know, I know he's, those are like his great, um, you see, I think those are his mom's, great uncles so that would be his great great uncles um because the italians just like what us puerto ricans and mexicans you know a lot of times you'll have a, a, a there'll be a uncle or aunt that's the same age as a, as a nephew or niece and i think that's the case when it comes to frankie the chico he was the one of the younger brothers um uh, and he had nephews that were around his age you know what i mean uh no 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 he had uncles that were around his age because his dad I think his name was Bu- Bu- Bubsy, his dad Bubsy. So then there, it was his uncle George and all them uh, were more around his age. Uh, so same thing like with us, like I said, the Italians and Puerto Ricans, Mexicans, you see that a lot. Uh, for example, my sister and my niece, they're the same age. They're four months apart. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it is what it is. And then my old lady, uh, her and her uncle are the same age. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. But, uh, uh, you know, they say he was a powerhouse. He was a gangster's gangster through and through. He was old school, Costa Nostra, you know what I mean? So, uh, I mean, the only thing about that, when they say he was old school, Costa Nostra, you know, they, he he had something to do with the boss getting killed. But then again, if you look at history, a lot of bosses got killed. You know, Vincent Magano, uh, Joe the Boss, uh, uh, the other one, uh, uh, Maranzano, uh, Diaguila. Uh, you know, there's a lot of them. Carmine Galante, even though I don't believe Carmine Galante was the boss at the time, I believe it was Rusty Rustelli, but because Rustelli was locked up and Galante got out after being down 18 years or whatever, he was down and he was, the, I believe he was the underboss or the consigliere when he went in under Bonanno, he felt that that was rightfully his place. Um, and so he started pushing and I believe that because the fact that he wouldn't kick down the other four families, any of the money he was making off the, off the dope because he was making a lot, they, they would have backed him. I think they would have backed him if he would have decided to, you know, bring them into the fold. Uh, but because he denied it all the way through and through, they said, let's get this motherfucker out of here. You know what I mean? And, you know, you got one cat that's still around from that. Uh, Bruno, he's still around. He's still, I, he just got out not too long ago. And he's still around. He was involved with that. And that was 1979, July 12th, 1979. So you're talking 40 something years ago. Um, I was just about a year old uh, when that happened. About two weeks shy of a year old when uh, that murder happened. Uh, no, no. Yeah, yeah. So, you know what I mean? You, he's still an old school guy around, but majority of those dudes from that era 
that right now would be, you know, between uh, – because Sammy, I think, is 77, 78 maybe. He's born in 45, right? 78. I think he's born in 45. So, guys, most of the guys that are in that age group uh, between 75 and 80 years old are gone. And most of them are dead. There's a few of them around. There's still a few of them there. There's some locked up still, but majority of them are gone. They passed. Uh, so, you know, there's nobody to contest what he's saying. And and you're not going to have no guys that are active, actively pushing that are going to come out and say, oh, no, I'm full of shit. And he knows that. So that's what he's saying. What he's, you know, Mikey Scars is 67. Um, he didn't get put on until 88, um, which is, what, 35 years ago? So he was already in his 30s. You know, he's known him, though, since he was, like, six or seven years old. You know, so there's only so much he can speak on. But a lot of things he can speak on is from – knowing the life, knowing proper protocol and proper procedure and how they do things, you know. But then again, on the flip side, rules are made to be broken and they've been breaking rules all along, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I mean, even when you look back and like Michael Francis, for example, he says Halloween night, 1975. But from what everything we read, the books supposedly were closed from 1957 to 19, uh, what was it? 1977, or excuse me, 1957 till 1976. Supposedly the books were closed, 19 years. So he says he was made in 75. Then you've heard other guys say 74 or 73, and usually it's Columbo's. Uh, it, it seems to be mostly Columbo's because I think they said Jerry Lang was made in 73 or 74. Books were supposed to be closed. So how did they do that? Did Carmine and Persico just say, fuck it. I'm making them. I'm the boss of this family. I don't give a fuck what the commission says. That's probably what happened. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it seems, too, like since the Genovese are so, the West Side is so secret, secretive that it seems that they do that shit, too. Uh, you know, they're like, fuck them other families. We can't trust them motherfuckers. I'm not going to, we're not going to tell them anything about what we're doing. You know, and I kind of get it. But then again, why does everybody else got to bob by the rules, you know, uh, certain rules? So it just goes to show you that uh, rules are made to be broken. There's a lot of backstabbing, a lot of disloyalty, a lot of treachery, a lot of uh, all that when it comes to that type of life. Anytime you got money involved, and it's big money when it comes to these guys, uh, you're going to get this a lot. When it comes to position, power, power positions, um, people will politic against one another and politic with others to build uh to build a, 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 a allegiance to knock off others you know what i'm saying it's just the way it is it's always been like that um for some reason people think because we're from the same organization or from the same group that they're just gonna automatically like everybody and it don't work that way everybody has their own personality their own uh downfalls their own uh uh, what's that? Uh, you know their own everything. You know everybody ain't the same. That's why we're called individuals. You know what I'm saying? So this person's swag, this person's get down ain't gonna be liked by this cat. And just because they're from the same family or the same group or the same crew or the same squad or the same uh, gang or the same whatever the fuck doesn't mean they're gonna like each other. You know what I'm saying? And we've seen that many, many, many times over. Otherwise, you wouldn't have certain individuals talking shit about other individuals. Caught on wiretaps, caught on, you know, surveillance, caught on whatever the fuck. Phone calls, phone taps. You know what I mean? People talking about this one, talking about that one. Uh, it's reality. That's what goes on. You know, <clears throat> when it comes to, like I said, when it comes to money, <clears throat> organizations, money, you're always going to see this happen. <clears throat> when it comes to the power plays, you know, to position yourself <clears throat> on what you believe is the winning side, all this type of shit's going to happen. When it comes to being powerful and becoming more powerful, you know, obviously if you're an associate, you got some power. You know, once you get made, you become a soldier, you're even more powerful. You know, obviously you get put in a captain's position, you're going to be more powerful. You know what I'm saying? Because now you're running a whole crew of guys anywhere from you know, anywhere, if it's a couple, couple to China, you know, that's a captain of 10. Um, you know, some crews could have 15, 20 guys, made guys, and then have another, you know, 
50, 40 associates. You know, you figure each soldier probably has three or four, three or four, maybe even 10 associates, you know, all making money. So obviously you become that skipper, you know, that capo, that capo regime, that skipper, that captain, uh, you know, street boss, because they're, they're considered a boss. You know, they're a boss of a crew. You know, some of these guys, uh, if you're in a certain neighborhood, you're the only guy from your family in that neighborhood. Uh, you know, you're going to be the boss of that neighborhood, you know, uh, like how what's the name was in Bronx Tale, uh, Sonny. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know how Colion was, Vito Colion was in The Godfather. You know, they were coming to him about everything. You know, he ran that whole area. You know what I'm saying? So if you run a whole area, you're obviously going to be powerful. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. You know, and then, you know, you keep going up the ladder, you, you're more powerful. You become a, uh, you, you know, you become part of the, the administration. You become the, the consigliere. You know, now all the beefs come to you. You know, all the beefs come to you and you dispute the beefs. If it's something that you got to take up the ladder, then you do that. But a lot of times, you know, you're supposed to be, uh, What's that called? You're supposed to be like uh, at that position. You're supposed to be. You're supposed to always have an open mind. Never supposed to take sides. Listen to both sides of the story, then come up with your decision. You know what I mean? As the counselor, as the advisor, uh, and then also you got the ear, the boss's ear, and you give him advice on what you think. You know, basically you're telling the boss just like a chief of staff would tell the president. You're gonna be telling them things that they don't really want to hear, and you got you know it is what it is. You know, but uh. You get that position, you become pretty powerful. You be, and if you go up again, you know, to that number two position, there's two syllables. That, I mean, there's two two words put together under boss. So you're looked at it just as a boss too. You got the power pretty much as a boss. You're almost as equal, just not quite. You know what I'm saying? You're just uh, barely underneath them. But anything a boss does, you can do. You know what I mean? You got the power to do all that pretty much from everything I read and everything I've heard. You know what I mean? But I'm not. Uh, you know, I, I know how things are ran over here in California with the OC over here, you know, and a lot of it's very similar. So, you know, I do got to I do know how things are ran. You know, what I mean, and it's ran very similar. Uh, n not never was a member or nothing like that. No more than associate. But I've had I've been privy to have conversations and be around some legitimate members. And uh, I'll just leave it at that. And, uh, you know. Most of the time, you're not supposed to be hearing certain things. But like I said, I was privy and I was around certain people. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. But I'm definitely not going to say who those people are or anything what I've ever heard and discussed with any of them. Uh, and that's for sure. You can bet on that. <laughs> but uh, but you know, it's a little video about uh, you know, what could have been hypothetically if Frankie DeChico wasn't killed. Would things have been different? Uh, you know what I mean? So drop it in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this. And, uh, you know, what you think about it. If you think I'm totally wrong, if you somewhat agree, if you don't agree totally, if you feel it was more of this or that, I know. So feel free to post it in the comment section. Uh, again, uh, thanks to everybody for subbing and getting us to this point. Um, big shout out to Thin Dude, the Thin Dude, and Vito the Pitbull for uh we had like 982 i believe went into his chat he got us up to like 993 and then 993 994 it might have been 996 and then tommy stiggs went on live or later that day and he got us up to 1006 and i think now we got like 1060 something maybe 1070 because i dropped a short earlier and i, I might have got a couple subs on that i don't know so we're pushing up we're pushing on 1100 now um, but definitely the watch hours, we got to get up. So if you guys don't mind, go back and watch some of the old videos. Uh, I'm, uh, just a little short of halfway there. I'm, I got about 1900 watch hours and we need 4,000. That's the other part of the goal. So the two goals were to get a thousand subs and 4,000 watch hours. And like I said, so far we're at like 1900, 1,900 watch hours. So it's just about halfway there. Um, so we need to get that 4,000 succeed. We need to succeed, uh, exceed, excuse me, exceed that 4,000 watch hours to get us in that monetization position. Um, that way, you know, we can help, help get helped out a little bit on some equipment. Um, things ain't cheap, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and, uh, 
And but I do appreciate everybody. Uh, so with that being said, Big Lou tapping on out. But what it do with Big Lou? <laughs>